famous YouTuber Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast just went after a Christian TikToker. It gets interesting, guys, so let's react to it. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I help you follow Jesus daily. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. It is an amazing blessing to have you guys supporting me on a monthly basis. If you're not familiar with what Patreon is, it is a way that people can support me and my ministry on a monthly basis. It's the only way that I can continue to do this. My goal is to be able to do this full time one day and every person on Patreon helps me get closer to that goal and my mission of helping people follow Jesus daily. You get exclusive perks like our Discord, bonus videos, early access to different videos. So sign up today. Thank you so much guys. Now onto the video. Okay, it is toasty in the studio today guys. It's about 30 degrees I feel like in the studio. So if I'm sweating a little bit, you know why. Anyway, that's not going to stop us from getting into this video. So let's go. If you don't tell people about Jesus, either you don't believe in him or you hate everyone around you. See, to believe in hell and not warn somebody about it makes me question if you know about it. If you know the person who talks about it. How much do you have to hate the people around you to say nothing about hell? Oh you have the key to heaven. You have the power. Okay, so I can understand. They're, they're starting to laugh at this. I can understand from a non-believer's uh, perspective, this is pretty out there, right? Um, it's very theatrical. There's no problem. Like, that's just the way people talk, and it's the way public speaking works. If you're just monotone, whatever, emotionless, it's not very interesting to watch. So David's really keyed in on, you know, it's a theatrical thing, and I don't think for a second that it's not genuine. That's just who he is. I don't know him personally, but I think that's authentic to who he is is um, but it is uh, it is theatrical right and it is intense and he's using language that is really um, provoking <laughs> language which I think he uses intentionally for sure um, the whole idea of okay you know you hate people if you don't share the gospel we're going to talk about that and maybe a little bit of um, biblical nuance to that idea and how that actually should play its way out in our lives practically but let's keep watching the video path you have the map <laughs> And you're willing to stay quiet. So either you don't believe in Jesus, or you just hate everyone else around you. Bro, if you don't, or gladly, maybe this whole concept doesn't make sense. Just maybe. Or just maybe both. I would gladly spend eternity in hell than share the same oh my space goodness. as this guy. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what I mean? Like, wow. Every single one of his videos, this, he's wow. crying. Like his eyes are like bloodshot from crying. I will gladly spend my just making fun of his appearance. Like, oh my goodness, that's so low. But uh, I mean, it's theatrical, right? It's genuine. I do believe that. It, when you're, it, it's a thing when you're scrolling TikTok or whatever social media, and you encounter somebody that's really emotional, and they're talking about something, and you're just not in that state to process that, or you don't understand it, and it could seem cringy or goofy or whatever. But I think an important aspect of of being authentic on social media is being able to be vulnerable. And and I appreciate David for that. The fact that, you know, some people make fun of him. He's too emotional, whatever. But it shows that he cares about what he's talking about. And I appreciate that about him. And yeah. And life and hellfire <laughs> than, than listen to this guy. How does he go on with his <laughs> life? He's that. just like terrified the whole time. He's got to tell everyone. Okay, so let's talk about this. Are you just supposed to be in a complete panic? Do you hate people if you don't share the gospel with them? And should you be panicked about sharing the gospel with everyone all the time, every person that you meet? What should be our perspective as Christians on that? So a couple things, right? I, I firmly believe that hell is real and the Bible makes that clear. It's it's a real place. It's not just a figurative whatever. No, it's real, right? Also in the Bible, we as disciples are called to go out and evangelize, make disciples, witness, be a witness for Christ. That's part of our calling as Christians. Another thing is that God is sovereign over salvation. It never says that it's completely up to us to save people. No, it continually reaffirms God's sovereignty over salvation, how he brings people from spiritual death into spiritual life. And also, we understand in the Bible that God has given us good gifts like food, family, and rest that we're encouraged to enjoy. So how do all these things work in harmony? So were we supposed to share the gospel, but we're also supposed to rest, and, and yet, but people are going to hell. So how do we understand this? Well, somebody that's completely panicked and consumed with this thought that I need to be witnessing every second of the day, I can't shower, I can't, you know, do anything else. It's just about sharing the gospel because it's up to me to save them. They're going to hell and get them in the kingdom. 
it shows a lack of understanding of God's sovereignty. I, I don't think God wants us to be running around in panic and in fear all the time because people are going to hell and it's up to us to save them. No, I think that God is in control. But at the same time, if we're not stirred to share the gospel with people, that demonstrates that we're actually using God's sovereignty as license to disobey his commands because he uses the means of evangelism to bring people to himself. He has this thing under control. So I trust God when he says, when he says to enjoy the good things that he's given us, to not be in a spirit of fear. I, I trust him when he says that. So I, I think that we ought to be motivated. Our evangelism ought to be motivated out of love and not fear fear and panic. I'm not I'm not supposing that that's what David is trying to propagate here is the idea that we should be evangelizing out of fear, but I'm just saying that that is often what people get from this idea. It's not just about sharing the gospel with every single person you meet. We need to understand that none of us can live up to that standard at the same time. So maybe it is hate to not share the gospel with everyone. I, I, I don't think that is because I think there's discernment involved in it. I think it's more um, complex, biblically nuanced than that. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, we all fall short. None of us are able to witness to every single person we come across in our daily life. That's just not feasible. So where do we fall back on? We, we fall back on God's grace. We fall back on his love and care for us, his understanding and the understanding that, look, we do fall short. We're not able to do all that we want and should do. But that doesn't mean that we we just can't, okay, well, just give up. I can't witness to you know, everyone, so I witness to no one. No. Well, now I'm motivated out of love and out of joy instead of fear and instead of panic. And I think that produces um, a more grounded way at sharing the gospel with people because I think often when our motivation is just, okay, get them in the kingdom, get them saved, then we'll try to utilize fear tactics. So you don't want to go to hell, do you? You got to get in the kingdom, get, believe in Jesus, as opposed to giving them a well-oriented understanding of the gospel of our creation and how we were created in the image of God, our sin and rebellion and how we were all deserving of God's wrath, but the joy and the beauty of the gospel and how Jesus came to this earth to take the punishment that we deserve on himself. And when people get that full understanding of the gospel, it becomes a beautiful thing that we don't need to fear or panic about our eternal destiny or even the eternal destiny of other people because now our faith is in Jesus and now what flows from that is a peace and a love that overflows into other people. We receive that from God and we're able to give that to other people. So I don't, if you're in the state where you're like, I'm so, I'm worrying every night, I'm panicked about people going to hell. I want to just say that, look, it's good to have urgency but at the same time, reevaluate your heart to see if you're really trusting in Jesus and God's sovereignty ultimately. Am I putting my faith in me and my ability to say the right words or have the right conversations to bring somebody in the kingdom? Or am I listening to God and trying to obey and discern what he would have for me in this place in my life, in my daily life, how he can best follow him? Because that's ultimately what we're getting to. It's not about just bringing somebody in the kingdom. It's like, okay, well, how can I share the gospel with somebody and build a relationship with them and disciple? Because discipleship is so essential, but we often forget about it because we have such a small mindset of what it looks like. We think, just get people in the kingdom, get people in the kingdom. But what we need to be doing is, hey, okay, I'm sharing the gospel with this person, but I want to walk alongside them to show them what it looks like to follow Jesus daily. And that's what I'm passionate about. That's why this whole channel exists. It's help people find Jesus and then help them follow Jesus daily. And I'm trying my best to do it. Nobody's perfect. But that's the goal. So no, you should not be in panic all the time. And yet we should be stirred to share our faith out of love and out of the peace we've already received in Christ. <laughs> Which God are you serving, Elo? In this, gods aren't golden statues. Sometimes gods could be, uh, phones. <laughs> oh, yeah, this okay. Okay. Well, it's theatrical, right? It's theatrical. Not necessarily my style, my but you know. I just God. pierced trying to illustrate this a point. phone. This god of yours. But get okay. this. <laughs> You, you pierced through my God, too. My, my, my God, okay. you pierced through him, and he, he still loves you. The only God that can ever give you satisfaction, you pierced him. Maybe it's time you toss away things that aren't giving you satisfaction, like fake phony... Rich from a guy who's got like a hundred bracelets on. And if I smash my... 
okay so it's interesting like you may have critiques about the style of what he's going about you may be like oh it's not your style and i can readily admit that's not my style too but you can understand his heart behind it he's trying to illustrate a point about the the hold that phones have in our lives uh interestingly enough the the people on this podcast here really take it quite literally and as you're about to hear my phone how do i watch his tiktok right yeah right good point why is he on tiktok that's a mega good point you know, it, yeah, I mean, they're like, okay, that's a mega good point. It's not that good of a point because what he's trying to illustrate here is the the hold that phones have over our lives and how they can form into idols, things that we worship or we don't necessarily think of worship. Like we don't bow down. We go, oh yeah, phone so great. But what do we do to things that we attribute to be our God? Well, we look to them to fulfill our needs. And that's what we're doing with our phones. Oftentimes, we're looking for them to fulfill our needs. And so, you know, here, I think there's just a little bit of misunderstanding here. At the same time, something uh, important to realize, like, and I'm realizing this too as I'm watching this video is, okay, yes, yeah, so some things are a little theatrical and you can kind of understand why they're taken aback by some things. But at the same time, the gospel message is foolishness to those who are perishing. The gospel message is is something that is confusing and it doesn't make sense and like to a lot of people. And that's just because God hasn't opened their eyes to see it. It's God who opens people's eyes. And I think about atheists when they say, God doesn't exist. There's no evidence of God. Well, Romans 1 makes it very clear that we all know it. God exists. We simply suppress that truth and unrighteousness. And that suppression bleeds through to a lot of other aspects of our lives. And so it's important to realize, okay, I'm preaching the gospel here. I'm getting a lot of backlash. And David is probably really used to that. I am too on TikTok and other social media platforms. Is to understand, okay, look, God is going to bring the people forward that the need to hear this. And at the same time, like some people are going to hear this and it's just going to sound crazy to them. I want to be sure that I'm speaking truth in love, that I'm not just being a jerk and that's why they're turned off to it. But no, you know, at the end of the day, the gospel message, it offends. These gods, these idols that give you no worth and start worshiping the one God who does. The true God who is pierced for you. This guy's Get so this God's uncle. If you really unpack what he's saying, there's one God, true God. Everyone else is going to hell and dying. That's so interesting. In our culture nowadays, it's seen as hateful to claim there is objective truth. That if I say there's one true God that you ought to be worshiping, that that is seen as the peak of arrogance. Who am I to say that I know what is truth? Who are you to say what you know is true? No, actually, we should just be believing what, you know, believe what you want to believe. Whatever you think is true, that's true for you. And whatever is true for me is true for me. There is no standard of truth. The interesting thing is that Jesus, he didn't claim to be just a truth. He claimed to be the truth. He said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The unfortunate thing is even people that claim to be Christians will try to compromise. They say that Jesus is just a way to God as opposed to the way to God. People try to paint Jesus as some sort of hippie, like he was only about love and acceptance. Well, yeah, he was about love and grace and acceptance, but he was also about truth and repentance. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. While the world may claim that our proclaiming Jesus as the truth is hateful, it's actually the most loving thing that we can do because love without truth is meaningless. Love needs to be grounded in the foundation of what is true. And Jesus has revealed that in himself. Christians scare me. I'll tell you why. Because they go, the Christians that go like, Jesus died for your sins. They're basically, it's like, I can do anything. I can do any heinous crime imaginable as long as I accept Jesus. We got to put a, we, we need some mm, kind of barrier to be like, not you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Jesus got to lower his standards. I don't buy this shit. Look at what goes on in the church. The worst of the worst that goes on in the church. I didn't even say it. You know what goes on there. We need a barrier where Jesus is like, not you. You, you, not you. I don't like this. Okay, we need to make some distinctions here. Somebody that did something really evil in their past and yet have repented and trusted in Jesus are forgiven. You may not understand that. You may not comprehend how, why that works, how that could happen. How could this person be saved? But ultimately, I would ask you to look back at your own heart and ask, how could God save me after all the stuff that I've done? It doesn't make sense. And that's why it's amazing grace. But at the same time, if there is somebody that continues to propagate abuse within or outside of the church and lives in a lifestyle of sin, 
They are demonstrating that the Holy Spirit does not live within them. They're not Christians. We can't be afraid to point this out. The Bible says that we will bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And if somebody only has rotting fruit in their life, it demonstrates that their roots are in the wrong foundation, that they're not grounded in Christ. It's about progressively following Jesus and getting closer to him, growing closer to him. That's what we call sanctification. It's not about doing everything right all the time, but it's about when we fall that we get back up because our loving father is once again welcoming us to follow him. Just as the prodigal son came home after spending all that the father had given him, the father welcomed him back with joy and with love. That's the exact way that God welcomes us back with joy and with love, even when we don't deserve it. If we were in God's place, which is impossible, but if we were, yeah, we would probably turn people away. Yeah, that's too evil. I can't save you from that. No, that's, I'm not going to accept you. I'm not going to let you into my kingdom. But that's the beauty of the gospel is that through Jesus, we all can find reconciliation with God. And yes, we don't understand it. Yes, we don't deserve it. But that's what makes it good news. That's what makes it so amazing. And that's why we want to share it with people. Because it's life-changing. Because it means that regardless of what you've done in your past, you can still find freedom from all the bondage and shame and guilt that you still carry with you. That sin doesn't have to have a hold on you anymore. That you can be free in Christ and be made a new creation. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, once again, thank you to all the people on Patreon that make this content possible. You can follow me on Instagram at it's Isaac David. I almost forgot it for a second. And on TikTok. TikTok. I can never say it proper. Oh my goodness. I'm on this app, but I don't know how to say it. Whatever. TikTok at it's Isaac David. You got it. I will see you over there. Okay. I'll see you guys next time. God bless. Bye.